In this series of top tips, we're looking at various techniques for adding realism to your parks. This week, we're going to be talking about pathing. There are four main types of path in a theme park. Plazas, queues, guest paths, and staff-only paths. Unfortunately, there are no staff-only paths in Planet Coaster, despite the fact they implemented it into Planet Zoo, and it would be super easy to bring over. Cough, cough, frontier. You can use some trickery involving curbs to create staff-only paths, but this isn't always 100% reliable. The method I use is to create dead-end paths with the staff room at the end. This way, guests will have no reason to use the path, and it's a great technique for making backstage areas come to life. Whilst on the topic of staff-only paths, service roads are a critical part of any park. These wide roads allow large vehicles to easily get around the park for deliveries and maintenance during the off-season. You don't have to use paths for these, but it's often the easiest way to create nice smooth roads. At the entrance of almost every park, you'll find a plaza. A plaza is a wide open space to allow for increased guest flow. The size of the plaza depends on the size and capacity of your park, so plan accordingly. When planning your park, have a think about areas that could become traffic issues and consider opening it up into a plaza. You'll often find one where there are a large number of shops and restaurants, for example. The easiest way to create a plaza is using the grid system. Place your central path piece before using that as the grid reference and working out from there. To add some height variation, consider splitting your plaza into two levels and joining them, but be aware you may end up with some gaps, so maybe add some flower beds. The easiest way to create a seamless plaza is to lay out your pathing however you need it and then cover it up afterwards. This way your pathing can look like a hot mess and no one will know any different. Next to your standard guest paths. Once again, try to predict areas of heavy traffic and make these paths wider. Despite the default path being 4 meters, you'd rarely find paths this thin in real parks. Try not to use the same style all the way around your park. It might seem strange popping a bunch of different types of path down, but remember your park was built over a long period of time, likely using various different materials. When it comes to adding queues and exits to your ride, the number one rule to remember is queues should be long, exits should be short. Queues fill up super fast, and once they're full, guests will be turned away. There are two main types of queue, out and back and cattle pen. As the name suggests, an out and back will head out a long way from the station before coming back. And again, as expected, a cattle pen queue is named after a cattle pen. You can use one of these or even both of these types, but just ensure the length of the queue matches the ride capacity and demand. Coasters will need the longest queues as they're the most popular attractions, whereas something like a carousel can get away with a very short one. With all the main queue types covered, it's time for some top tips. Due to the pathfinding of the AI, guests and staff like to cut corners and much of the time walk through your lovely buildings and scenery. Well, thankfully there's an easy fix for this. Simply bury a barrier or curb into the building or ground and the AI will avoid it. Do you have some janky junctions where pathing meets? If you hold down Z or Z to you guys in the Americas, the path will create a wonderfully neat connection. If you're trying to place a path fairly close to another path, chances are it'll keep trying to snap to it. If you hold down control, it will allow free placement. The raised paths in Planet Coaster rarely look too realistic. Either work it into the terrain or build some kind of custom bridge to blend it in. Similarly, if you're going underground, paths will never just go through a hole in the terrain. Build some kind of retaining wall or tunnel. When it comes to ways of decorating your pathing, the list is endless. Much like I mentioned with coasters last week, careful not to over-theme. Sometimes fencing, bins and benches is all a real park would have. I personally don't like seeing the edges of the path, so I like to blend it in with fencing, bushes or buildings. Sometimes just a curb is better than nothing at all. Queues are the one place in theme parks that heavy theming is commonplace. This is where your guests will spend most of their day, so it's important to make it aesthetically pleasing. Consider some custom fencing, advertising screens, and if your park is in a warm country, think about adding some shelter from the sun. And there we have it, a whole video about pathing and you made it to the end. Congratulations! The next Top Tips video won't be for a few weeks, but try not to miss me too much. And if you do, don't forget you can join the Discord. Link in description.